Okay. So um, we'll hope, hopefully this will all work out right. Um, so the, um, this is just a list of the committee members who participated in this. Some of these names will be familiar to you. Uh, I don't believe anybody is in attendance at your meeting, but please don't hesitate to ask any of us questions if you have it. The study should be out. Uh, it's, it's out in preliminary form. I'm not sure if it's fully published at this point. Next slide, please. So what I thought I'd do today is uh, go through, briefly go through the report, because there's not much time, and highlight some of the recommendations, conclusions and recommendations that we ar arose. Um, the chapter two is just documenting previous sample return missions. These are largely the Apollo, Luna, uh, Genesis, Stardust, Hayabusa, uh, return samples, plus it discusses some of the other uh, samples such as meteorites and cosmic dust, as well as uh, analogs and witness places we were just hearing about. Chapter three uh, talks about the current missions, uh, Hayabusa 2 and OSIRIS-REx, which you've all been hearing about, uh, as well as some of the near future missions that have been in discussion, like CSER. Um, I guess a point to be made is that Currently, all of the return samples that we have in hand, plus those that are being that are currently flying, are looking to return what we've been dealing with uh, over the decades, which is rocks and minerals and glasses, and uh, nothing more challenging, such as ices or gases or a large component of organic materials. Um, so this report is focused a lot on you know what's what we currently have and also what we're expected to have within the next five years but we do take some time to look out towards the future and what will be needed to handle those samples. Um, let's see, then chapter four, the current labs and facilities. We, we have some very large tables in the report. Uh, I'm not gonna go through them here, but we basically tried to take a, a, reckon, a reckoning of what types of analytical uh, instrumentation exist and their mission relevance, and that's in a very large table within the report. We also reached out to laboratories both in the U.S. and in Europe uh, who are currently undertaking re uh, analyses of extraterrestrial samples uh, to get information about those particular labs, what type of instrumentation exists in those labs, uh, how the instruments have been paid for, uh, what kind of technical staff exists, and if technical staff are there, how they are paid for. And that's in a some large tables in the appendices. These are not comprehensive. There is no way we could make them completely comprehensive, but I think they're probably a fair representation. Then chapter four, um, oh, that is chapter four, and then chapter five is where most of the uh, recommendations uh, reside, uh, looking at what we have and what, what we will need and looking at NASA's investment, history of investments and what are the investment strategies for the future. Okay, let's go to the next slide, please. So I'm just gonna start with some of the recommendations. We were just hearing about curation. Uh, so regarding curation, we, re we recommend that NASA uh, should increase support for JSC to develop what is going to be needed for future sample returns in particular for these more challenging materials, uh, organic matter, ices, and gases. And we also recommend that NASA should accelerate the planning for curation of, <clears throat> excuse me, returned Martian samples. Okay, um, we, that may also be done in collaboration with other countries as appropriate. Next slide, please. So one of the conclusions we made about instrumentation is that in fact, there's pretty good, uh, there's, there's a lot of instrumentation out there and currently in use. We didn't see any obvious gaps in instrumentation that's needed for analyses of the returned materials. However, instrumentation doesn't last forever, and a lot of the some of the <clears throat> current analytical capabilities will not be present when the samples are finally returned, of, for example, in five years hence. And there's definitely a need to uh, develop instrumentation for more challenging materials. Uh, that will require investment in technologies that are currently not widely utilized in the sample return community. <clears throat> uh, next slide, please. 
So looking at um, data that we received from NASA, this is the PMEF proposal funding rate <clears throat> over the last uh, 10 or so years. You can see, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> you can see that uh, propor proposal pressure is significant and the funding rate has a general decreasing trend. That is, uh, it's getting harder and harder to get your proposal funded. Next uh, slide, please. So um, this is data for absolute dollar amounts that have been invested in different programs like LARS and uh, non-LARS PMEF. The little black diamonds are the actual dollars that are spent for equipment for sample analysis. And there is a general decreasing trend also. And when you note that this is real dollar, this is you know, absolute dollars, it's not corrected for inflation, it means that um, that trend is probably even more significantly in the downwards trajectory. Note that the 2017 numbers are not, in, are not complete. Uh, next, uh, next slide, thank you. <laughs> so, um, so we took all of this into consideration and said, okay, <clears throat> what are the different scenarios that are possible uh, and what will be the, the implications for those? If the uh, funding for instrumentation is flat or decreased, there's going to be needs to cut labs that exist today. Uh, that could be mitigated uh, potentially by funding regional and national facilities to some extent. <clears throat> we also noted in the report, though, that if you look historically at some of the major breakthroughs that have been made uh, on sample return analyses, uh, many of these are done in uh, PI labs, not in sort of facilities uh, that are funded uh, by individual PIs. Uh, on the other hand, if there's modest funding increase, uh, the current labs could be supported plus some new capabilities, but it would be very challenging to develop methods for handling these new materials that we hope that someday will be returned. And then finally, if, of course, if there's a significant funding increase, uh, we'll probably all be happy, uh, maintains current capabilities, allows pursuit of new capabilities, funding of technical staff, which I will return to here in a moment. So uh, next slide, please. So a conclusion about investment considerations is that if the funding remains flat or decreased funding level, then they're going to definitely have to prioritize uh, the, what funding uh, exists. Um, and it's gonna, there's going to be some hard decisions that will have to be made. Next slide, please. So investment recommendations is to prioritize support for instrumentation, technical staff, curation, and equipment maintenance. Uh, and we need, we need to replace existing capacity and develop new capacities. Next slide, please. We did make a um, specific recommendation regarding the LARS program uh, that it should that NASA should consider opening it up to all return samples. Currently, lunar samples are not included in LARS, um, seems like there's a little bit of a, uh, sorry, a difficulty uh, for getting funding to do a lunar sample analysis. And we note that there's been some pretty important results that have occurred, uh, even though these samples have been in the collections for decades. Uh, the discovery, for example, of water in the moon has been a pretty significant um, research result on some samples that have been around for a long time. Um, Next slide, please. It, we heard very clearly by uh, talking to the community and also um, the survey that NASA did a few years back of PIs that funding for technical support in the current uh, funding scheme is very challenging and it makes it very difficult to retain good technical support staff. Um, so, um, we think that this means that NASA's investment in analytical facilities is not being maximized, and it could be enhanced by t providing a means for some sustained funding of technical support staff. Next slide, please. So that led to the recommendation that NASA should provide a means for longer term, like three, uh, sorry, five-year technical support staff uh, for analytical instrumentation. We left it open. Uh, we didn't want to be prescriptive in terms of how that come about, comes about. It could be a program, a separate program, uh, like 
NSF uh, at least used to have for uh, requesting technical support, or it could be uh, through the existing programs appended to current proposals or what have you. But it is seen as an important need that's not being met. Next slide, please. Uh, another important consideration is training the next generation of highly qualified workforce. Um, next slide. So recommendation is that NASA should uh, encourage principal investigators to address in their research proposals how the work will contribute towards this training. Those of you who are familiar with NSF system know that there's this thing called broader impacts that uh, training next generation scientists would fall within that. Nothing exists currently in NASA, but we view it as a very important uh, endeavor and something that should be supported. Next slide, please. Um, we also encourage NASA, this is a very long and wordy recommendation, but the, the two bullets up above uh, summarize it, invest in developing novel instrumentation. And this is especially going to be true uh, once we start to think about ices, gases, and, and large uh, amounts of organic materials uh, if they come back. Uh, next slide, please. And then finally, um, yeah, I think this is the next, the last slide. Um, these are just recommendations to continue to engage in strategic uh, relationship with international partners. Uh, it's becoming more and more important as time goes on. Um, there's some examples of unique international labs listed there. And um, NASA planetary science uh, should consider ways to facilitate the dissemination of information about uh, these types of facilities, um, and there's various ways that this could go about, be done. Okay, and then the final slide is just um, a couple of nice pictures of some of the return samples or the targets, and um, I guess the, the, the bottom line message is that NASA spends a huge amount of money to return samples for study, and it seems that it uh, to make infinite sense to invest in the labs and people on Earth to make the most of that investment. And so that's sort of the, the basic um, message from this consensus study. Okay, that's uh, quick and dirty. Uh, the report, I encourage you to read it. If, uh, if you have interest, I'll take questions. Thank you, do we have questions? We have a question from online. Um, you said you surveyed U.S. and European labs. You also include Japanese. I'm sorry, I can't. The audio is very poor. You, 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 you surveyed uh, U.S. and European labs. Did you also survey Japanese? Oh yes, we 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 tried to do it globally. Um, it was um, we definitely have Japanese labs. We have at least one lab in China. Uh, it was very difficult getting any information out of Russia. Um, but yes, if you look in the appendix, you will find, uh, uh, as well as Australia, we tried to be global in scope. Thank you. Other questions? All right. Thank you very much, Roberta. You're welcome. Um, so